In computing, ambient intelligence refers to electronic environments that are sensitive and responsive to the presence of people. Ambient intelligence is a vision on the future of consumer electronics, telecommunications and computing that was originally developed in the late 1990s for the time frame 2010 to 2020. In an ambient intelligence world, devices work in concert to support people in carrying out their everyday life activities, tasks and rituals in an easy, natural way using information and intelligence that is hidden in the network connecting these devices. As these devices grow smaller, more connected and more integrated into our environment, the technology disappears into our surroundings until only the user interface remains perceivable by users. The ambient intelligence paradigm builds upon pervasive computing, ubiquitous computing, profiling, context awareness, and human-centric computer interaction design and is characterized by systems and technologies that are embedded. Many networked devices are integrated into the environment. Context aware. These devices can recognize you and your situational context. Personalized. They can be tailored to your needs. Adaptive. They can change in response to you. Anticipatory. They can anticipate your desires without conscious mediation. Ambient intelligence is closely related to the long-term vision of an intelligent service system in which technologies are able to automate a platform embedding the required devices for powering context-aware, personalized, adaptive and anticipatory services. Where in other media environment the interface is clearly distinct, in an ubiquitous environment, content differs. Artur Ludmere defined such a smart environment by describing it as ambient media. It is constituted of the communication of information in ubiquitous and pervasive environments. The concept of ambient media relates to ambient media form, ambient media content, and ambient media technology. Its principles have been established by Artur Lugmer in a manifestation, morphing, intelligence, and experience. A typical context of ambient intelligence environment is a home environment. Overview. More and more people make decisions based on the effect their actions will have on their own inner, mental world. This experience-driven way of acting is a change from the past when people were primarily concerned about the use value of products and services, and is the basis for the experience economy. Ambient intelligence addresses this shift in existential view by emphasizing people and user experience. The interest in user experience also grew in importance in the late 1990s because of the overload of products and services in the information society that were difficult to understand and hard to use. A strong call emerged to design things from a user's point of view. Ambient intelligence is influenced by user-centered design where the user is placed in the center of the design activity and asked to give feedback through specific user evaluations and tests to improve the design or even co-create the design together with the designer or with other users. In order for AMI to become a reality, a number of key technologies are required. Unobtrusive hardware, seamless mobile, fixed communication and computing infrastructure, dynamic and massively distributed device networks which are easy to control and program, human-centric computer interfaces, dependable and secure systems and devices. History in 1998, the Board of Management of Philips commissioned a series of presentations and internal workshops, organized by Eli Zelka and Brian Epstein of Palo Alto Ventures to investigate different scenarios that would transform the high-volume consumer electronic industry from the current fragmented with features world into a world in 2020 where user-friendly devices support ubiquitous information, communication and entertainment. While developing the ambient intelligence concept, Palo Alto Ventures created the keynote address for Roll Peeper of Philips for the Digital Living Room Conference, 1998. The group included Eli Zelka, Brian Epstein, Simon Birrell, Doug Randall, and Clark Dodsworth. 
In the years after, these developments grew more mature. In 1999, Philips joined the Oxygen Alliance, an international consortium of industrial partners within the context of the MIT Oxygen Project, aimed at developing technology for the computer of the 21st century. In 2000, plans were made to construct a feasibility and usability facility dedicated to ambient intelligence. This home lab officially opened on 24 April 2002. Along with the development of the vision at Philips, a number of parallel initiatives started to explore ambient intelligence in more detail. Following the advice of the Information Society and Technology Advisory Group, the European Commission used the vision for the launch of their sixth framework in information, society and technology. With a subsidiary budget of 3.7 billion euros, the European Commission played a crucial role in the further development of the AMI vision. As a result of many initiatives the AMI vision gained traction. During the past few years, several major initiatives have been started. Fraunhofer Society started several activities in a variety of domains including multimedia, microsystems design and augmented spaces. MIT started an ambient intelligence research group at their media lab. Several more research projects started in a variety of countries such as USA, Canada, Spain, France and the Netherlands. Example scenario. Ellen returns home after a long day's work. At the front door she is recognized by an intelligent surveillance camera, the door alarm is switched off, and the door unlocks and opens. When she enters the hall the house map indicates that her husband Peter is at an art fair in Paris, and that her daughter Charlotte is in the children's playroom, where she is playing with an interactive screen. The remote children surveillance service is notified that she is at home, and subsequently the online connection is switched off. When she enters the kitchen the family memo frame lights up to indicate that there are new messages. The shopping list that has been composed needs confirmation before it is sent to the supermarket for delivery. There is also a message notifying that the home information system has found new information on the semantic web about economic holiday cottages with seaside in Spain. She briefly connects to the playroom to say hello to Charlotte, and her video picture automatically appears on the flat screen that is currently used by Charlotte. Next, she connects to Peter at the art fair in Paris. He shows her through his contact lens camera some of the sculptures he intends to buy, and she confirms his choice. In the meantime she selects one of the displayed menus that indicate what can be prepared with the food that is currently available from the pantry and the refrigerator. Next, she switches to the video on demand channel to watch the latest news program. Through the, follow me, she switches over to the flat screen in the bedroom where she is going to have her personalized workout session. Later that evening, after Peter has returned home, they are chatting with a friend in the living room with their personalized ambient lighting switched on. They watch the virtual presenter that informs them about the programs in the information that have been recorded by the home storage server earlier that day. Criticism. As far as dissemination of information on personal presence is out of control, ambient intelligence vision is subject of criticism, e.g., David Wright, Serge Gutworth, Michael Frieda Valdeal, Safeguards in a World of Ambient Intelligence, Springer, Dordrecht, 2008. Any immersive, personalized, context-aware and anticipatory characteristics brings up societal, political and cultural concerns about the loss of privacy. The example scenario above shows both the positive and negative possibilities offered by ambient intelligence. However, it should be noted that applications of ambient intelligence do not necessarily have to reduce privacy in order to work. Loss of privacy is only an issue in ambient intelligence if it is analyzed by third parties for other purposes. Power concentration in large organizations, a decreasingly private, fragmented society and hyperreal environments where the virtual is indistinguishable from the real are the main topics of critics.
Several research groups and communities are investigating the socio-economic, political and cultural aspects of ambient intelligence. New thinking on ambient intelligence distances itself, therefore, from some of the original characteristics such as adaptive and anticipatory behavior, and emphasizes empowerment and participation to place control in the hands of people instead of organizations. Social and political aspects the ISTAG advisory group suggests that the following characteristics will permit the societal acceptance of ambient intelligence. Amy should facilitate human contact. Amy should be oriented towards community and cultural enhancement. Amy should help to build knowledge and skills for work, better quality of work, citizenship and consumer choice. Amy should inspire trust and confidence. Amy should be consistent with long-term sustainability, personal, societal and environmental, and with lifelong learning. Amy should be made easy to live with and controllable by ordinary people. Business Models The ISTAG group acknowledges the following entry points to Amy business landscape. Initial premium value niche markets in industrial, commercial or public applications where enhanced interfaces are needed to support human performance in fast-moving or delicate situations. Startup and spin-off opportunities from identifying potential service requirements and putting the services together that meet these new needs. High access low entry cost based on a loss leadership model in order to create economies of scale. Audience or customer's attention economy as a basis for free end user services paid for by advertising or complementary services or goods. Self-provision, based upon the network economies of very large user communities providing information as a gift or at near zero cost. Technologies. A variety of technologies can be used to enable ambient intelligence environments such as Bluetooth Low Energy, RFID, ICT Implant, Sensors, Software Agents, Effective Computing, Nanotechnology, Biometrics, Users in Fiction, Minority Report. One scene illustrates adaptive advertising in the future. Consumers are identified via retinal scans and receive targeted ads. The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy by Douglas Adams. The doors have emotion and express this when people use them. See also Technology in the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. The Diamond Age by Neil Stevenson. The Diamond Age depicts a world completely changed by the full development of nanotechnology that is present everywhere. Research Groups Several research groups have been founded to tackle the question of the manifestations of ambient intelligence, what can be done and what will the actions most probably result in. Ambient Intelligence Group, CITEC, Bielefeld University. Ambient Intelligence Laboratory, National University of Singapore, Ambient Intelligence Research Group, Ulster University, UK, Artificial Intelligence Group in the Informatics Department, University of Minho, Ambit Research Group, ELAB, Artesis University College of Antwerp, Agent Systems Research Group, Alcatel Lucent Research and Innovation, Ambient Services Group, AJOU University, CUSLAB, Wellbeing Life Care Research, AMA Vital, Spanish project to develop intelligent services for elderly and disabled, Autonomous University of Barcelona, CAIAC, Autonomous University of Madrid, AMILIB, Carlos III University of Madrid, Applied Artificial Intelligence Group, Carnegie Mellon University, Silab Ambient Intelligence Lab, DI, Domotics and Ambient Intelligence, University of Alicante, University of Deisto, More Lab, Mobility Research Lab, Fraunhofer Institute, Ambient Assisted Living, Fraunhofer Institute, IGD, Fraunhofer Institute, In-house, Harriet Watt University, Pervasive, Ubiquitous and Mobile Applications Lab, 
Hydra, European Research Project on Ambient Intelligence Middleware, eHome Lab Living Lab, Lucerne University of Applied Sciences, IAMEA, International Ambient Media Association, Intelligent Environments Research Group, University of Essex. Sense Lab, Sensor Network and Smart Environment, Lab, Auckland University of Technology, Joseph Stephen Institute, Department of Intelligent Systems, Kingston University London, Ambient Intelligence Research Group, LIMSICNRS, Laboratoire d'Informatique pour la Mécanique et les Sciences de l'Ingenieur, MAMI, Modeling Ambient Intelligence, UCLM, Spain, Mimosa Project, Microsystem Platform for Mobile Services and Application, Minami Project, Micro Nano Integrated Platform for Transverse Ambient Intelligence Applications, MERL, Ambient Intelligence for Better Buildings, Mesh Cities, a project researching and distributing information about the future of smart, livable cities Mesh Cities, MIT Media Lab, Ambient Intelligence Group, ELITE, Research Group, Politecnico di Torino, University of Palermo, Department of Computer Engineering, Distributed Artificial Intelligence Group, NTT Research, Ambient Intelligence Research Group, Philips Research, Ambient Intelligence Research in Experience Lab, University of Reading, Ambient and Pervasive Intelligence Research Group, Serenity Security and Dependability in Amy, Swami, Safeguards in a World of Ambient Intelligence, Serco, Contextual Services Group in the Information Technologies and Communications Department, Technical University of Cartagena, EMI Lab, Tampere University of Technology, Lab, GECAD, Knowledge Engineering and Decision Support Research Center, CETPD, Technical Research Center for Dependency Care and Autonomous Living, GREC, Qualitative Reasoning and Learning Systems Research Group, LST, Life Supporting Technologies, Osami Commons, Open Ambient Intelligence, Valor Institute of Technology, AMIR.